They tell me I have to do that awkward silence when everything begins. <laughs> We're setting the scene. Yeah. Interior apartment. <laughs> COVID. It's David Gordon from Theater Mania here. It is Friday, thank goodness. Uh, I'm here with the great Margot Cyber. Hello. Uh, one of my favorites. Thank you. Oh, thanks. Uh, you just released two new singles called Influence and Searcher. They are benefits for the Actors Fund for COVID Relief and the Loveland Foundation. And that's the last thing I'm going to be reading from cue cards today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for telling everyone all of those things. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. I mean, it's really nice to see your face. We were just saying that it's like, it's been ages. And yeah. remember theater? <laughs> no. No, no. Really? Really? No. Yeah. We're watching a lot of TV. <laughs> a lot of TV. I know. I know. Hopefully that will be that will be jumping back yeah. pretty soon for so people. Tell me about uh, the singles. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, before all of this happened, um, I had a bunch of live performances lined up for the spring and DC and Maryland and Virginia and um, with the whole band. And we were just actually, I think the day before the shutdown, we had a band rehearsal. We were, we were going to have a band rehearsal the day right after the shutdown uh -huh. and just go like, okay, what are these new songs? Like, what are we putting out there? You know? Yeah. And of course, none of that happened. So, um, so my, one of my band members, dear friend and collaborator of mine, Alan Stevens Hewitt and I were like, well, these two tunes are ready, but we can't get in a recording studio. We can't bring everybody together. So what if we just kind of like postal serviced this and sent it back and forth and kind of mixed it on the fly? I was in uh, hiding in a cabin in West Virginia and he's in Havistraw in New York. And we just went back and forth weekly um, editing these tunes and, and re-recording them. I was re-recording them in a in an old storage locker, like with my head inside the storage locker. Um, it's ridiculous. There's like some video of it on my Instagram where there's like blankets are hung and I took things off the, I took the egg crate off the bed and just like wrapped myself in it and, um, and re-recorded these songs. And so we were like, let's just, let's put them out into the world. Yeah. Um, because it seemed like they were ready to go and I, I couldn't hold on to them any longer, you yeah. know? Um, and then we wanted, I wanted all the proceeds to benefit um, organizations that I think are incredibly important and that um, need the support. You know, the Loveland Foundation is like bringing opportunities of healing to communities of color. Mm -hmm. And um, especially like at a time where everyone is grieving. Yeah. I think mental health is of the utmost importance. Sure. And the Actors Fund has been a godsend and as I think has, has helped like over 13,000 people with $15 million in, in yeah. COVID relief. You know, I took free financial wellness workshops with them. So we just wanted this music to also be out there and benefit the causes yeah. that we care about. Is it weird recording music with people who are like all over the place? Like tell me about <laughs> like the process, like what is the process like? Well, I, yeah, I, I think I thought it would, I thought it would be weirder than it turned out to be yeah. um, because I really enjoy having all the musicians in the room and we kind of jam and we figure out like what the sound's going to be and somebody suggests something and we try it and then we kind of collaboratively put the arrangement together. And so in this case, you know, I had the lyrics, I had the melody structure and I brought it to Alan and he was like, okay, what if we through this sound in. So especially in influence, it's like kind of heavy, um, like the technological sounds and like computerized sounds and a lot of space. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's Sputnik is featured in there. And, um, and so the cool thing was that like digitally, we could add so many elements that would be a lot more difficult to do live. It's really cool. They, I mean, they sound awesome. You'd never know that they were recorded like in a storage locker. I'm so glad. I'm so Rock glad. Rock. I'm so glad. And that was the cool thing because you're like, oh, I mean, we can still during this time be empowered to make music remotely, yeah. even if we can't play live. Yeah. What um, you were working on, Unknown Soldier, we were just talking about it yeah. when everything got shut down. Yes. Uh, what was the shutdown experience like for you? <laughs> Uh, well, um, we had been in previews for Unknown Soldier at Playwrights Horizons. We had opened the show on Monday night and the uh, 
shutdown happened on Thursday. Right. So I, we, we got a sense on Wednesday evening. We didn't know we were going to close the next day. But on Wednesday evening, you know, you look out into the audience and you see a lot of empty seats. I was going to say, was there a drop off? Just the night before. It was like the night before. And, you know, you we had been talking in the cast. OK, maybe it's not so smart for the cigarette that goes in my mouth to then go into Estelle Parsons mouth. You she, know, like those kinds of she's shit. She's literally 92. Yeah, she's literally 92. So we always, I was like, I don't know. Right. That's a good idea. She's literally 92. Right. Yes. So I was like, let's preserve her. I don't know. You know, and. And we saw a lot of people wearing masks in the audience. And so I had to say that I, I had a feeling it was coming, but I was in Midtown um, on Thursday having coffee with a friend, got the email from playwrights that was like, we have to stop yeah. and your dressing rooms are open and come on over and get your stuff, you know? And so I was in the neighborhood and I just like went over, packed up, Right. Got on the got on the ferry and went right. back to Hoboken and was like, and I haven't been back to the theater since. We were saying, yeah. you know, the yeah. set's still there and it's you crazy. Grabbed your one sweater and left. <laughs> yeah, right. I was like, I was like, does anyone need these Clorox wipes? Okay, <laughs> bye. <laughs> uh, is there a like, you know, it's a short run. Like, I don't know how attached you get to shows when you do them. Obviously, like Broadway stuff runs longer than sometimes. Month, sometimes <laughs> than a month at playwrights or I. Right. But yeah. Like, you get attached. Did you get attached to Unknown Soldier the same way that you got attached to like Rocky or In Transit or whatever? Yeah, I, that's a great question. I I would say that you know the difference being is that often when you're working at something at Signature Theater or at playwrights, um, you have a hand in shaping the material. Yeah. Which you know, doesn't always happen, you know, often when things are heading to Broadway, they've had out of towns, they, they know what works, or they have an idea of what works, you know. Yeah. Um, and so I think what the attachment comes from, um, really getting the opportunity to, to work on the material and to, um, to tr use that entire preview period, with a lot of writing changes, which yeah. I think in Broadway tends to be more tech changes. Um, so yeah, we were, I mean, attached and then it was gone and then it felt like it never happened. So, right. you know, I hope one day we can record the album. I do. Uh -huh. I really do too. Music is stunning. I mean, Michael Friedman's work is tremendous. Knowing that Ghostlight has their commitment to recording all of this stuff. I'm hopeful that. Yeah. 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 Me too. Me too. What was, so going back, I, I have to talk to you about Octet. Please. Um, I'm still obsessed with that show. Please, I, I just received, I don't know if you can see. Did you just get your drama desk? My award? drama desk award in the back, which I, I didn't plan, but I'm glad it's right there. I can see it. <laughs> it came yesterday. Nice. What, um, so that was last summer already. I know. Which is hard because I. it just felt so recent to me. I agree. I, I mean, agree. It is technically, but. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, how hard was that show to learn? Because for people watching this now, Octet, it's Dave Molloy who wrote Great Comet. Uh, it was entirely a cappella, some crazy vocal shit going on there. Yeah. And you're a crazy, I mean, I remember from Tomorrow of the River. Like, oh, yeah. Crazy vocal stuff there, too. But yes. Like next level. I, it, it was the hardest thing I've <laughs> I've ever, ever learned. Um, and you've done the a cappella thing before. I know, which is just, I've, I've, which is so weird, David, because I also like have no acapella experience. <laughs> like both for in transit, they were like, tell us about your acapella group singing. And I'm like, Never. my sister it has was in an acapella group, you know, like that's so um aware they some, what'd you say? I'm aware they exist. Yeah, I'm aware they exist. I haven't yet done it. Right. Um but now I've done two full runs of a musical um that are entirely a cappella. Uh I would say so um, don't you, I don't usually use the word lightly, but like Dave Malloy's genius level. Actual genius. Yeah, actual genius. And so, um, wow, Octet was incredibly hard and, and so fulfilling, which I actually, I think that's also why it feels like it just happened. Yeah. And we're so ready to do it again, which hopefully will happen oh. um, at Berkeley Rep in the spring. Right. But right. like, we'll see. Yeah. Um, 
it was it was incredible. I did a workshop of it very briefly. I, I think I would probably we would be in rehearsal for maybe eight hours or so, and then I'd go and work another four hours at least by myself. Um, and that was when we got to read the music. Right. Like that was just learning and reading and doing a little workshop of it. And then, you know, signature theater, like these amazing off-Broadway houses, the time to put a show up Isn't is that? not long. Right. So very swiftly, like basically after, a, in our first week of rehearsal, Annie Tip, our director was like, so by next week, we have to be off book. Otherwise we won't be able to stage the show. And Dave was still writing at least two of the numbers. So we were, I mean, it, that bonds you together. It was, it's incredible vocal work and it is an, a very difficult, um, like technical sing, but a very easy sing on the body, which is just so cool. Yeah, I don't know what any of that means. <laughs> it means like somehow oddly after 90 minutes of singing, you're not tired. Interesting. The storytelling, um, and the way that the score is written, it allows for like a full use of your instrument. So, which is very special. It's a, it's a much more of a chamber music, musical, yeah. you know? And I guess it helps that Malloy is a performer too. So he sort of knows yeah. what actors need, I guess. Yeah, and he knows when things aren't landing quite right or if there needs to be, you know, he's, he, is, he is generous with his, with his cuts and with his changes. Um, and it's funny actually, cause working on that, that musical inspired influence because, which is also very, you can hear it. I didn't want to say it without talking about it, but I could hear it. Good, the, good, good, good. Yeah. It, it kind of just fell in, it fell into place. It was like the inspiration for that song was, I was, I kept having conversations about, uh, I wanted to play more live gigs, but I couldn't book any live gigs until I had a healthy following, you know? And then I'm like, but the only way that I build a fan base is to play live. So right. it's like, it was like this cyclical thing of like, we just can't book you, sorry. We can't and, let you 54 below until we know you can sell out at least three quarters. Right, right. and then you're like, what, what, how do we? So, right. I mean, this is nothing new. This is not just like right. my struggle. There are people um, more or less with far fewer credits than I have that can play here every night. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So it was that frustration from that, like, how do I influence you? How do I get you to follow me? How do I, you know, and kind of coupled with the element of tech, like how we're using social media and like, especially right now, I mean, it's incredible and thank goodness we have it. And at the same time, like we're losing our ability to interact um, with, you know, socially. Yeah. It's atrophying. So influence is like the octet, you know, the, the tech element of that, which Octet was all about exploring our relationship to technology and like, where do we go from here? I mean, just like, what a genius thing to just like think of. Like, you know, the person that like, when Dave Malloy was like, you know, I'm gonna write an acapella musical about the internet. Like, you know, 20 people looked at him and was like, that's a terrible idea. Right, like, best of luck. Right, yeah. It's genius. And it's, I, I think that the thing about it that I love so much, and again, even more now, is that these people who were deeply addicted to their tech came together to put their tech away and have a self-help group where they sang. Like what could be more human than singing and vibrating together for 90 minutes, you know, without your tech? Did you then, I don't wanna ask, I have so many questions about that show that I want to ask you, but I don't want to do it on the air because it's spoilers. So will you bear with me and stay on for five minutes? So I have to yes, listen. of course, of course, of course. Uh, what was I going to say? Alex Timbers keeps posting videos from Rocky Tech on his Instagram. I saw that. And looking at it, and it's like, that show is crazy. And that was your first like Broadway thing. Was that like being thrown to the wolves? Yes. <laughs> I mean, I... Not in a bad way, but was it like... Not in a bad way. In I mean, I, I definitely like ran to the bathroom on multiple occasions to cry out yeah. of being overwhelmed. Right. Like you go from whatever, bus and truck tours and, you know, regional shows and, you know, you need me to pull the curtain? Sure. And like, and then you build your way up and and then I... to to be leading a Broadway show with Andy Carl 
And these on your first go. My right? first go. I mean, my first Broadway show was. I, I remember no one. Knew yeah, no one. Theater. No one was. Everyone was like, "Who are you?" And I was like, right. "I've been doing theater for so long." Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, I actually saw. I told Alex this. I watched a bootleg of the show. Really? Because I'd never seen it. Yeah. You know, was you do recent? it. Was this recent or was this like? This was like in the last like two years. Uh huh. Because my husband hadn't hadn't seen it, like missed right. the show, right? And we weren't together then. So I was like, let's watch Rocky. And it's amazing. <laughs> like Unreal. I, I couldn't I couldn't believe the things that that they pulled off. Yeah. You know, I just couldn't. I just it's it was very, very, very cool. And I'm I am so appreciative that I got the chance to like have it be that experience. And like the people were really, really, really yeah. nice. Just the fact that the boxing ring also doubled as like the ceiling and the stage walls and they were able to figure out how to- And then it. came out into the audience. Right. And that it came, the stage came into the audience. Like what? Was it a well shot bootleg? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, whoever did it. Yeah. <laughs> it was a well shot movie. Technology is amazing. Anyway. Yes. I mean, and now, I mean, th people have been contacting me, like different performances sometimes make it on YouTube, you know? Yeah. yeah. I was like, I just saw you in the last five years. I saw, and the whole thing's online. And I'm kind of like, great. All right. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm like, great. Enjoy yourself. It's the coronavirus. Do, you know, watch, <laughs> watch it in theater. Like, yeah. please. But buy your singles. Yes. Yes. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah. yeah. So usually we just, you know, it's like just stream it on Spotify or whatever, but I would love it if people actually purchased influence and searcher as all the proceeds after cost are going to these charities. So, um, you know, click into your old school iTunes and yeah. And purchase them. And your album 77th street too. Yeah, my album Seventy Seventh Street. Yeah, like, uh, two years, like almost two years ago, came yeah, out two years ago. Yeah. yeah, time is meaningless now. It doesn't mean anything. No, no, completely meaningless. <laughs> it's like, like fr Friday, sure. Right? Yeah, Margo, thank you for your time. Of course, David, thank you for having me. My pleasure. Please stay on for five minutes because I have so many questions. <laughs> okay, okay, I will do. Yeah, we'll do. Thank you. And anyway, thanks everybody for watching. Have a great Labor Day weekend. Please. Whatever you do, wear a mask so I can leave my house eventually. Please. And, yeah. and thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Especially thank you. <laughs> Everybody be well. Bye.